All right, let's get into some news. Uh, President of the United States. So Joe Biden signs National Monument Proclamation for Emmett Till and Mammy Till Mobley. Right? So basically, they'll get monuments, and they're honoring them. Well, my first question is, and not to sound insensitive, but why? Exactly. Why? So, What's the motive behind this? (laughs) <laughs> There's always a motive So over the past few years Joe Biden has lost a lot of Black voter support mm. So Sometimes he does things that seems a little Panderish and he, You know I, I, What comes to mind hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Alright so let's go there Yeah so you know people have been pressing him About reparations and He's basically kind of dodged that Talk the whole time yeah, you can't keep dodging it. I mean, at the end of the day, <clears throat> I think that's going to be his only uh, way to, to get reelected. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, if that, you got to you got to make it happen. If you don't make it happen, uh, adios. Yeah, pretty much. You know, I don't I don't see a lot of people feel like he hasn't done much for maybe black men since he's been around. Mm. You know, the Democrat Party, they always do a lot for black women, but. They don't do as much for black men. And then we we're spending so much money Then we're in a war that we didn't see coming. Yeah. And people are pretty much feeling bankrupt. Then there's all these rumors going around what's going on in the White House, too. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> well, there was cocaine in there. <laughs> oh, man. But no one knows where it came from. I don't know what to say after that one. I can't even. I, yeah. I know what I want to say, but I can't even go there. Yeah. So, without saying too much, it's just uh, you got to talk the reparations talk. This is my thing, right? Mm. And breaking away from him, just talking about strictly about reparations. For me personally, like I do understand like cash reparations, but I don't think that's all that would need to be sent out. No. Nah. I think like what we're missing in Black America. Definitely missing more schools, hospitals, and banks. We had that all at one point in time, but during integration, we lost it. Yeah, no, absolutely. You, you, you're absolutely right. You can't just give people... Okay, let me just rewind. You can't give any people um, who are not financially educated on money, money. Right. What What you think going to happen? <laughs> They're going to gamble it all. And my problem with that is, like, uh, how fair is it to the people before us and after us, right? Like, how does this generation alone just say, hey, you know, give us the money and we all good for what happened? Yeah, and uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's got to be way more to this. We need some land. We need We need a lot of different things. And it's like, even when you talk about the whole reparation thing and how uh, a lot of people say, you know, give us the money, give us the money. Like, we need a plan. Mm -hmm. Like. We don't have, like, a. Not an individual plan. We need a plan for the people. Like, for for the race, right? Like, I feel like um, generational, a generational plan. Like, over time, this is what's going to be. You know how they they do those plans for, like, schools? Mm Mm-hmm. Like, over this amount of time, this amount of money is going to be allocated into education. Mm-hmm. That's the kind of plan that we need in the communities. So It's going to take time. It's just a, uh, it has to be well thought out to where it helps us and everyone behind us. So yeah, it's no. not like you just, everybody gets like $300,000 and then you just gamble that away. And that's the end of that. The money will just end up back in the hands where it already was. Originally. Habits. Spending habits. Right. Where do we spend all the money? <laughs> not <laughs> not in our community. Right. It's giving it right back. Pretty much. All right. So this happened in Savannah, Georgia. So Rashida Walden, she worked at a restaurant called Flying Fish and Bar Bar and Grill, right? That's a red flag. <laughs> <laughs> and basically her bosses there have been casually using racial slurs against her and other black employees. For how long? The whole time they've been working there. I don't know yeah, the exact time. But, you know, they'll um, 
come to work and they'll be like, hey, and go do this or and go do that. And even um, people, even customers have overheard them saying it. It's terrible, man. I feel like the she went and talked to the owner, uh, Michael McMahon, about it uh, and he fired her. He fired her. Yeah, for standing up first, though. Yeah, they definitely need a lawsuit. Um, it's crazy because, like, the fact that, one, that she stayed as long as she did, however long she'd been working there. Yeah. And dealing with that in those kind of conditions, it just shows you the, the state that we're in. Like, the job market, financial situation. Like, she went through all of that because clearly she had all the options. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I guess. But it's like, you got to kind of have your dignity. How were you raised? I could never work at a job. No. Nah. <laughs> no. Nah. Like, Day one? That's what I mean. <laughs> like, this job blows. I'm out. <laughs> you said what? <laughs> <laughs> this job sucks. You said what? There's no way I'm sticking around. No one's going to, I'm not going to let nobody call me that. Yeah, she should have, first time they call her that. She should have made herself a plate, sat down, <laughs> <laughs> and then quit. 